Roy Miller, Tom Cruise, walks through Wichita Airport, seeing a particular flight to Boston is delayed. Meanwhile, a beautiful blonde woman, June Havens, Cameron Diaz, lugs a heavy carry-on bag as she checks in, asking if she has a seat on an earlier flight than she originally booked. We see Miller watching Havens, and he bumps into her a couple of times as they go through security. Havens, an ace mechanic who restores old cars, explains the special vintage parts in her carry-on bag to the security agent. They're for her father's 66 Pontiac GTO, which she is rebuilding and restoring for her sister as a wedding gift. Even though she has a confirmed reservation for her flight, she is told at the gate that it is overbooked. Miller is able to board, softly telling her that sometimes things happen for a reason. Unbeknownst to Havens, CIA Special Agent Fitzgerald, Peter Sarsgaard, is monitoring Miller's movements as he speaks to his boss about something called the Zephyr. Fitzgerald sees Miller bump into Havens through airport security cameras, and wants to know who she is. Fitzgerald's partner asks if Havens should be picked up by field agents in Wichita, but Fitzgerald says he has a better idea. A moment later, the gate attendant for the flight tells Havens that a seat was found for her, and she may board. Miller is dismayed as he sees Havens board, he knows Fitzgerald is responsible. On board the flight, Havens notices that there are only four or five other people present. She relaxes with a drink, and tells Miller about her dream of someday driving the restored GTO to Cape Horn, while he checks out the other passengers. Miller sadly says that, someday, is a code for never. Havens is charmed by Miller, and goes to the restroom after a moment of turbulence causes her to spill her drink on her shirt. While she is occupied, Miller is attacked by the remaining passengers and crew. All are dispensed, including the flight attendant and pilots, one of whom demands to know where the Zephyr is, before attacking. While in battle with them, Miller demands to know why Fitzgerald put Havens on the plane. After Havens emerges from the restroom, she sees Miller holding two drinks, and goes over and kisses him. Miller calmly informs her that everyone on board is dead. Thinking that he is joking, Havens plays along until Miller enters the cockpit. In a spell of turbulence, she notices the dead bodies falling over in their seats, and spilling onto the aisle. Miller lands the plane on a highway, but skids off the end of the road into a corn field. Miller gives Havens a drink to calm her, but she doesn't need long to see she's been drugged. Roy tells her that, bad men are going to find her and come see her. She needs to stress that she doesn't know Miller, and she must never get into cars with them, and she has to be very wary of the word safe, stabilize, and secure, these words, especially if repeated, means they intend to kill her, or at least imprison her where nobody can find her. The plane explodes as Havens passes out. She awakens at her home, finding water and aspirin by her bedside, her shirt cleaned, and breakfast made and waiting for her. Post-its by Miller remind her that she doesn't know him. As she hurries to get fitted for her sister's wedding, Havens fails to see that she's under surveillance. Haven struggles through the day, trying on bridesmaid dresses for her sister, April's, Maggie Grace, wedding. Talking over what to do with their dad's GTO car, Havens is shocked to learn that April wants to sell it. Havens is lured out of the shop by a man claiming her truck is about to get a ticket, but she is accosted and surrounded by Fitzgerald and his agents, who make her get into one of the cars. Despite her claims not to know Miller, Fitzgerald shows airport security footage showing him bumping into her and talking to her in the airport, and shows proof that she was on the flight with him. When Havens insists she and Miller did not discuss any FBI agents, he asks if they talked about Simon Feck, a name Havens has never heard. Fitzgerald drops the words Miller warned Havens about, she will be taken to a secure location until Miller is contained, someplace safe. Suddenly, Miller shows up, and with much shooting and acrobatics in a pulse-pounding car chase, rescues, Havens. Havens doesn't know who or what to believe, and while Miller is occupied in a gunfight, she flees, grabs a bus, and goes to the fire hall, where her former boyfriend, Rodney, Mark Blucas, works as a firefighter. Upon hearing her story, he thinks she is merely overstressed from the wedding, and takes her out for pie. While they are chatting, Miller arrives and kidnaps Havens. 
He handcuffs her and shoots Rodney in the thigh, giving him a flesh wound, telling him this will all turn him into an overnight hero and virtually guarantee his desired promotion to lieutenant. Miller explains that the security cameras in the pie shop caught footage that will make Havens look like his hostage, which will take heat off her name, at least with the local police. He tells her that he tried to warn her against getting on the plane. When Havens angrily protests that she felt safer with the agents than she does with Roy now, he drives into a garage, goes to the roof and uncuffs her, letting her go, but disgustedly telling her that her life expectancy is a lot shorter without him than with him. In the meantime, he has to see to the safety of someone who trusts him more than Havens does. This wins Havens over, and she agrees to accompany him as they go to pick up Simon Feck, Paul Dano, a genius inventor who created a perpetual energy battery called the Zephyr. Miller explains that he was watching over Feck, when he learned that Fitzgerald, the agent who took Havens for a ride, planned to kill Feck, sell the Zephyr and frame Miller for it all as a rogue agent. Miller and Havens arrive at his safe house in New York City where he left Feck. He is missing, but has left a message hidden among math equations, that he can be found on a train in Austria. The two are immediately ambushed by men belonging to Antonio Quintana, Jordi Mola, a Spanish arms dealer. After Miller again drugs Havens, she drifts in and out of consciousness between their capture and escape from Antonio's men. Miller brings her to an island in the Azores that is off the grid, which he calls his home. After leaving Miller in frustration to wander the island, Havens notices a message on Miller's cell phone, a movement alert followed by a satellite zooming in to a Boston address, and a garage with a man cleaning a 67 Grand Prix. While studying this, her cell phone rings, showing her sister's caller ID. In answering the phone, she accidentally leads Antonio's group to the hideaway. Havens goes back to Miller, smiling at him, but then she starts trying to hit him. Miller dodges all her blows and catches her in a grapple, teaching her how to get out of it. She pulls him down to the ground and they roll over in the sand, both laughing. But the arrival of a remote drone is no laughing matter, Antonio has sent it to kill them. They make it to Miller's helicopter. Havens is afraid to fly, but doesn't want to be drugged again, so Miller gives her Vulcan neck pinch to knock her out and transports her to a train heading through the Alps. Havens awakes alone and, missing a message from Miller, leaves to get breakfast in the dining car where she encounters Bernhard, Falk Henschel, a German assassin. Mistaking him for Simon Feck, Havens tells him she's a friend of Miller and starts making small talk. When she finds the message from Miller stuck to her boot, she realizes that Feck is with Miller, and Bernhard is someone else. She hurries to the train galley, where Bernhard corners her and tries to kill her. Miller and Feck arrive, and Miller fights Bernhard. Havens tries to hit Bernhard, and he catches her in a grapple. Using the trick she learned from Miller, Havens manages to escape the hold, causing Bernhard to be impaled on his own knife. He is then knocked out of a window by Miller and presumably killed by a train coming from the opposite direction. At the next station, Fitzgerald is leading an investigation. Miller, Havens and Feck are gone. At the car they'd ridden in, Fitzgerald breathes on the window and sees a circular mark left behind. Looking through it, he sees Miller outside, staring at him, before he disappears into the crowd. Miller puts Havens and Feck up in a hotel in Salzburg, and heads to a meeting with a mysterious, beautiful woman named Naomi, Gal Gadot. Havens follows him, and overhears him making a deal to sell the Zephyr to Antonio. Havens is picked up by the CIA and meets with Isabel George, the director of counterintel, Viola Davis, who shows her footage from the Wichita airport cameras that, when slowed down, appear to show Miller slipping the Zephyr into her carry-on bag the first time he bumped into her, and then retrieving it the second time, suggesting he used her as a mule to smuggle the Zephyr through airport security, the bulky metal parts for her father's car hiding it from metal detectors. Director George confirms that Miller is a rogue agent, and gives her a pen to signal them when she is with Miller and the Zephyr. Miller meets her back at the hotel, and shows her the Zephyr, which is now showing signs of overheating. Havens uses a pen transmitter to notify the agents, but Miller notices, gives her a sentimental goodbye, and escapes to the rooftops. 
After leading the CIA agents on a chase, Miller is apparently shot and falls into a canal. Fitzgerald notices the Zephyr is missing. Director George tells Havens they'll find Miller's body, since he had the Zephyr on him. She is returned home in time to stand at her sister's wedding. Meanwhile, Fitzgerald and his partner are driving through Germany with Feck. Fitzgerald's partner notes they're going south when they're supposed to be going west. Fitzgerald shoots and murders his partner, and calls Antonio to tell him he'll meet him in Spain in two days with Feck. Havens is at her garage after the wedding, sadly telling her co-worker that April doesn't want to keep the GTO. The partner is working on a Grand Prix. Havens hears a song on the radio that Miller used as his ringtone, and googles the address she remembered from his iPhone. She sees it's only an hour away, and thinks it's a safe house that Miller might go to, or have gone to. Driving there, Havens notes she's being followed, and uses another trick from Miller to give them the slip. Havens arrives at the house and meets the people living there, Molly, Celia Weston, and Frank, Dale Dye, and realizes that they are Miller's parents. She learns that Miller's real name is Matthew Knight. They believe their son, a former army sergeant and Eagle Scout, is dead following a chopper crash in Kuwait. Frank and Molly are fabulously wealthy from winning lotteries and sweepstakes they don't remember entering, Frank insists they never did, but Molly says Frank never knows what he's typing into their computer. Havens leaves the Knights, and calls her own voicemail, announcing she knows her phone is bugged and she wants whoever is listening to know that she has the Zephyr, and wants to make a deal. She is soon captured by Antonio's men and taken back to Sevilla, Spain. She is drugged with truth serum, which makes her relaxed and happy. Antonio knows she was carrying a fake, not the real Zephyr. Under interrogation, Havens figures out that Miller wanted her to hear his phone call to Naomi, and follow him, so the agents would be led to him, and Havens would be in the clear and returned home. Growing impatient, Antonio demands to know where the Zephyr is, and she admits she doesn't know where it is, but lied about having it because she knew that would lead her to finding Miller. Antonio angrily orders Havens to be disposed of. Fitzgerald, who has kidnapped Feck, has arrived at Antonio's compound to make a deal for Feck, planning to turn him over to Antonio so he can force Feck to build another Zephyr. Meanwhile, Miller has been following Feck using a tracking app on his iPhone, and has also arrived at the compound, Feck is locked in the trunk of Fitzgerald's car. Havens is rescued by Miller as she is being taken out for execution. They pursue Fitzgerald and Feck on a motorcycle, while eluding Antonio's men during the running of the bulls. During the chase, Antonio tries to shoot Miller, only for his car to be overturned and trampled by the onrushing bulls. Miller catches up to Fitzgerald at a dock for an amphibious plane and trades the Zephyr for Feck, over Feck's protests. When Feck resignedly says he'll make another one, Fitzgerald turns to shoot him. Havens hears the gunshot and sees Fitzgerald escape in the amphibious plane with the now extremely hot Zephyr. Feck comments that he made a mistake in building the Zephyr, and the battery is unstable. As they watch the plane climb, the battery explodes, killing Fitzgerald. Havens finds that Miller took the gunshot meant to kill Feck, and sends Feck to get help. Miller wakes up in a hospital in Washington, D.C. He receives an apology from director George, who tells him that he routed out a corrupt team, and she was completely fooled by Fitzgerald, the true rogue in the agency. He asks about Havens, and is told that she has returned home. He is warned that he can't be distracted, and must forget her to continue with his job. Director George also explains to Miller that the agency will transfer you to a secure facility tomorrow, for your safety, using the same wording that he warned Havens about. As they leave, a nurse enters, and gives Miller his medication. Miller realizes that he's been drugged, but then sees that the nurse is Havens. She sneaks Miller out of the hospital and drives off with him, in the rebuilt 66 GTO. Miller comes to in the car's passenger seat on a beach in Mexico, Havens returning from a beachside shop. After he asks what day it is, Havens kisses him and says it's Sunday. She tells him they're heading to Cape Horn, and he smiles agreeably. Havens and Miller drive off, traveling along a coastal road past a signpost for Cape Horn. 
The final scene shows the knights have just received two tickets to Cape Horn, presumably to be reunited with their son. Though Molly believes her husband ordered them by mistake, she nonetheless believes they won them, and insists that they go.